What's up everyone, welcome back to another video by Clip on my YouTube channel. I already made a video about the YouTube updates and in that video I explained why I was a bit off. But anyway, let's continue with the videos, with the tutorials. And this week I'm going to do something from my list. So basically every time I get the idea, I write it down. There's a pretty big list over here. So the idea is how to trigger LFO tool in Ableton. This is a short one, I'm going to do it next time. The best gator plugin. All right, so let's go with this one. So best gator plugins, there are two types of the gates, gators plugins. One of them are that gonna create, let's say, something from the pad to chop them out, like trans gates, like something from the pad, from something without any rhythmical part, like one, something that's gonna chop it up, like da 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 And another type of the gate plugins are the dynamic gates, so basically the plugins that we can use. Let's say we set the threshold to, let's say, minus uh, 12 dB, and every time the signal goes below that point, of the threshold that we set is gonna close up the signal. So of course we have attack, release, uh, hold. Actually, I'm gonna show it, even though I wanted to record this video about the gator plugins, like transgates, but anyway, so let's see if there's anything rhythmical in this project. Yeah, this track is pretty, pretty awesome that I'm working on right now. Let me see this one, the green one. Yeah, this is a perfect one, yeah. So let's say that I had something like this, so something sounding like this. So it's already rhythmical, but let's say that I set the reverb on the way that I don't like it. In most cases, this is the reason why I would use these dynamic gate plugins, is that if I have something that's rhythmical, ARP or something like this, and then I put it like a bit wrong, a reverb on, on them, I would try to get rid of this uh, reverb by using this gate. The only dynamic gate plugin I'm using is Fab Filter Pro G as... It works really well and I don't see any reason why I would try to use another one because everything that I want to do with this type of the plugin I can do with this Pro G and I'm really happy how it sounds. So the start point is that I would always start with attack on zero, release on zero and then hold on zero. Of course I'm not going to keep the, those settings as this. I'm just using this to set the threshold on the best possible level and the biggest effect of the gate plugin we can hear if we set release, attack and hold on zero and then on the second stage would be I would modify the attack and release and hold in a way that I would like to. So now the threshold point should always be above so now when I start playing there's going to be around this the signal we can see the level of the signal so basically I'm gonna always chase that the threshold point is just below of the point that that the signal the level of the signal is reaching so let's say yeah so something like this but because this sample have a different level of all of those peaks or transients or whatever you want to call it there are two different ways how I could do this this is another one of the really good tips and one of the things which I believe are pretty advanced is that for everything that we do while we work on our music we can almost everything we can do on many many different ways and I believe that the difference between a let's say mediate and advanced producer is that advanced producer will know many different ways how he can try to achieve a certain thing that he wanted to do in the, in the track and the more we know them and the more we try the possibility for a best sounding solution will be better so sometimes I will try to do a certain process with one technique another third one fourth one and basically I will try which one will suit the best for that particular case so the more of these things we know, the better it can sound. Now, as you were able to hear, it does reduce on the beginning because the threshold is now at minus 18 and this first ones, it actually touch on the good spot, but when the signal increases, then the threshold point is not in a good position. So I can automate the threshold, which would be the first solution. And another solution is that I can bring down all of these ones that are going up. So basically before this plugin, I can put, let's say G2 limiter and I would limit I would limit them and that way, let me just modify the threshold. Which sounds pretty interesting, not exactly what I wanted to do, but basically it sounds really interesting and maybe I would keep it this way. Now the second thing, as I already mentioned, is that I would automate the threshold. So first I would focus on the first part, which is pretty nice. I will just turn on the right so I can automate it.
Something like this, all right. So I will just need to rewrite the automation to set it a bit better, so it actually fits better. Okay, so let me just extend both of them, something like this, right? And then in this point, because I know it's, I can actually see that it's reached this point, I will basically move the... Okay, something like this, but in this part it does not sound good. Okay, I think it should go a bit more down here, something like this. Okay, and then it boosts, boosts again from this point up here, let's say. No, on this point it goes down again. Uh, yeah, so here it does not go on. Good. Okay, so something like this. All right. Ah, okay, I have on another channel I have, so I will need to extend it. Okay. So something like this, yeah. I can be much more precise, but... I think that you are getting the point, and... So in this point... I think this one is too low. Yeah, something like this, like... Yeah. And now, because there are small clicks, because in order that it does not have any clicks, we need to hit the zero point, or just to open attack slightly. All right, and also this is pretty extreme, because release on zero, I can also set up the release. I can also set the hold. Hold is like a decay, the same thing. Okay, a little bit less. Yeah, so let's say something like this, like... Okay. And, and then I could set, let's say, different reverb if I wanted. So, com for a comparison, let's turn off everything. Or... This is the way mostly that I use the dynamic gate plugins. And yeah, I'm not gonna touch it because I really like how it sounds this way. But let's say now the trans gate or rhythmical gates, I'm not sure the right uh, word for it. Okay, this one is rhythmical already. I will try to find some pad. Maybe this one. No, maybe this one because it's called Atmo. Perfect, yeah. So, I'm gonna use three different ones. The easiest one is from Kilohertz, Trans, Trans, Transgate, right? So basically, it's a round circle, there's 16 steps, we can reduce that, but basically we can skip it with this. I'm gonna make the shortest one, just to understand what it does. So it's chopping the signal, we can also do like attack. Sometimes like this we can make a different patterns like uh, or or extend it like keep and hold like this or maybe like this Yeah. Ah, yeah, this one is doesn't work because I have decay really, uh, I don't have any sustain, so... Also, we can reduce the number of the steps because that way it's gonna repeat it on a different way, it's not gonna fit in the 4-4 and it can create a more interesting result. Something like this, or let's say... Okay, or 12.
So for some smaller or easier tricks, the Transgate from Kilohertz is really nice. The second way would be basically to create a MIDI track. Let's say MIDI track, right? And then uh, what I would do, I will just make the 16th, like any note, it really doesn't matter because we're gonna use just the beginning of the note just to trigger the effect I'm gonna add on or the plugin. So yeah, I'm just gonna make it a bit shorter so I can just see it. All right, so now I will insert the MIDI gate. This is a default from Cubase and I believe that all DWs has it. So basically it's gonna gate this sample by the information from this MIDI channel. So it's gonna use only the MIDI start point as a way how it should do it. So I'm now gonna send it to Atmo MIDI gate, right? So now as it is, it's gonna be like... Okay, so now I can make those notes shorter. this way and then what I can do I can modify this MIDI from here uh, MIDI modifiers random I'm gonna use random and I'm gonna randomize the length of this MIDI notes so basically start point let's say I don't know like 25 and minimum value 25 maximum value let's say and I'm gonna open a release a little bit like Ah, no, 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 off. Okay. But for some reason, I always get those clicks. So sometimes I will do this and then I would uh, set some uh, reduction plugin to get rid of the clicks whatsoever. This is just a different method, but my favorite method is to use gatekeeper. So gatekeeper is a similar as LFO tool. Basically, we can just create like the automation of the level of the whole plugin. We can also use LFO tool, but just for comparison, like if I use LFO tool, it's pretty small. And then all these steps, like I, I could make like, I don't know, something like this. And then just to play around, I do can extend it, but I don't like how it looks when, once I scale it up. I don't know. I just use LFO for different reasons. Anyway, the gatekeeper is really, really, really nice. And I have a one really nice preset, which I use mostly. And this preset is called Transgate 2. Basically, there are different uh, gating settings, like this one with the different curves whatsoever. These are 32s. And if you can see, this is the two bar point and I'm not going all the way up. There is like two sixteenths less. And that way, once it comes back, it repeats it on a different positions and that way created to sound a bit more interesting. Now, I'm gonna put it to 100 watt just for you to hear the, diff the result. And yeah, I will always set it a little bit less. Also, this smooth is really nice. If the smooth is off, then... Sorry. We get the clicks again, so just smooth it up. It's gonna fade it on the beginnings and that way create it without those clicks. And if we set, let's say, delay on it. Yeah. And let's say with black hole reverb. So, comparison, or I just wanted to play you this track because I really love how it sounds. Anyway, this main lead needs to be a bit louder, but this is 
point for another video. So these are my short views on the Gator plugins, like the Dynamic Gates and Transgates plugins. There are also many, 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 many of them. I'm pretty sure that there's going to be most of you that's going to recommend some of the, those plugins as well. The main point from this video is that you understand that everything we do can be done in many different ways. And the more of these ways you know, the bigger possibility for getting the best possible result is going to be because it's not going to be the same case. Like if you put uh, one Transgate plugin, for example, what I showed with the Pro G with automation, it's not necessarily mean that it's gonna work good for every case scenario. In this particular case worked really well, but sometimes it really doesn't work. So I need to kind of limit the clips and whatsoever, whatsoever. So the more of different uh, techniques, you know, the bigger possibility for getting best possible results. All right, thank you very much. I already got uh, tired. I start to stuck a little bit with English and talking. So anyway, this was a video about Gator plugins and see you soon with another video. Bye, ciao. Boom.